Hello, in this video, I am going to show you how to pass JSON in the background. Instead of, you know, you know by default, it does it in a single thread dot application do, but in many cases, you know, this model simplifies coding and is fast enough, but it does not result, you know, in poor app performance and structuring. I mean, it, basically, we want to be able to, you know, do it in the background, therefore, we can, you know, just load up the data really, really fast you know to avoid that sort of you know sort of jumpiness they get when things are loaded so first thing you want to do is add the http package you go to the pubspec.yaml file and in the dependencies you want to say http add the latest version which you can locate at uh, dot lang forward slash no no that's not what i want that's not what I want indeed. So that is no, 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 no. Yep, pub.dartland.org packages. Type in HTTP. Go to this right here. Copy this version. And then what you want to do is paste this here. Do packages.get. Packages upgrade. And that's it. Now go to the main dot file. At the top right here, first of all, we want to basically import some classes. So we want to import package.http dot. And this is going to be as http dot dot. I mean, just as HTTP, therefore we can, you know, refer to anything from here as just HTTP. And we're going to say import. And we're going to import dot the asynchronous class. And we are going to import dot convert as well. Okay, so what we want to do now is create a couple of methods. One for fetching the photos, one for passing the photos. So the fetch, if you watched the video on how to fetch data from the internet, then a lot of this will feel right at home. So you're gonna have a future. It's gonna be a list of photos. And this is basically the photo is gonna be a class. So I need to get rid of one of these. It's given an error because at the moment we don't have that class. We're gonna create it very soon. We're gonna fetch photos and you'll accept as a parameter a HTTP client. It's uppercase and it's gonna be for clients, gonna be asynchronous. Then inside of here we're gonna have a response. And you can put you know authorization headers. I've got a separate video covering that. Can be a wait client dot get and we are gonna have https colon forward slash forward slash json placeholder dot type icode.com forward slash photos and we just need to return and basically we're going to use the built-in compute function to essentially pass the photos in a separate isolate and if you want to know more information about this i'm going to provide the official documentation so you can check all of that out so compute and it's going to pass photos that's a method that we are going to be creating next response.body we're getting an error for compute uh, i'm missing a import so i need to put import it happens it happens it's more than possible let's put flutter for slash foundation dot dot there we go this error will disappear when we create the method and this error will disappear when we create the class so let's get rid of this error now so we are going to put list so this is going to return a list and it is going to be a list of photos pass photos and it's going to have a string which is going to be the response body 
and it's gonna have a final value which is kind of modified and it's gonna be passed. So we are going to basically use JSON and decode the response body. We're gonna do dot cast. We're gonna cast it to a map and it's gonna be a key pair value. I mean key value pair and a string for the key and dynamic for the data type. I mean for the value. Um, we just need to return past dot map and it's going to return as a photo it's going to have the json value we're going to use the arrow operator so it's going to get photo dot from json again no, we don't have the photo class yet and we don't have this method so this method will produce an error but this error will disappear shortly dot to list and let's have a look make sure okay this should be passed this will disappear when we create the class as well this as well this and okay so we are now ready to create the photo class so we just need class photo obviously depending on the data that you are getting back you can you know modify this accordingly i'm using the json placeholder website where we can just you know get some basic photos but you can use your own url as well so then the final int album id final int id this is given an error because it has not been initialized we're going to be implementing the constructor very soon so we say final string title Final string URL, final string thumbnail URL, and next we are going to create the constructor which will just initialize these values over so this dot album ID, this dot ID, this dot title, this dot URL, this dot thumbnail URL and we're going to create a factory method it's going to be photo dot from JSON which is this right here so we are moving that error now and we are slowly getting this all coming together now And inside of here, we are just going to return an instance of this photo class. It's going to be album ID, and it's going to be the JSON data for JSON. Album ID, and this is going to be as an integer. We're going to really return the ID. This is going to be JSON. going to add an integer as well then we're going to return the title this is going to be a json file and this is going to be called title as string url json url as string and i see that we got an error because i have not done a capital s and finally, thumbnail URL is going to be JSON. We are almost there. I know, I know we've been doing quite a bit of coding in this video compared to many others, but we are getting there. Thumbnail URL as a string. And now all of there should be disappeared. Now, at the moment, this won't you know, naturally do anything. So if we go down to our application, so if we scroll down where we have our class here, first of all, we want to create a list of photos called photos. It's going to be equal to, and we just need to initialize it. So for the initialization, Hmm, what am I missing? I feel like I'm missing something. Ah, 
sorry, part of the hmm. Yeah, one time I'm missing what I'm missing. So photos. Mm. Nope, nope, nope. We don't want that there. We need to create one more class. Sorry, my bad. My bad. We need to create one more class. And this is going to be a class of photos list. So it's going to be a class of photos. It's going to be called photo list. It's going to extend the stateless widget, and it's going to be a final list photo photos. And we're going to have photos list. So the constructor, and this is going to have Q Q going to construct the photos and we also need to do super keep really wanting to put up pq semicolon there we go and then we're going to do at override so widget build context okay we don't want to return no we want to return a grid view dot builder. So if you don't know about grid views or any of this stuff, feel free to check out my other video, which I cover all of these layers, all of these widget types as well. So can grid delegate. I'm just going to put a sliver grid delegate with fixed cross axis count and the axis count I'm going to put is two. So I'm going to delete that because it's going to be more information of that and I make it like this two. Outside of here we are going to put an item count and this is going to be photos.length so it's dynamic then we're going to want item builder and this is going to be context index there we go okay I put a comma where they shouldn't have been return image dot network so we are getting a image based network so we're gonna get a URL and it's gonna be photos index dot from now URL Ooh. we are getting there we are getting there now in here we can finally, we can, instead of center, we can have a future builder. And this is going to be a list of photos. And here we're going to have future fetch photos so what we implemented above and this is going to have the http ttp client sorry it should be photo not photos I made a mistake there and now we need to implement the builder we can have context snap shot and we're going to say if Snapshot dot have error, and then we'll say print the snapshot error. Otherwise, we're going to return the snapshot we now have data. And it's going to say. Turn on the photos list 
And in here we need to pass in for photo, we need to pass in snapshot dot data. Otherwise we are going to center child circular progress indicator. Whew, we've done quite a lot. We've done quite a lot here. So I think we are ready to run this now. So let's let's have a look at what we get. There we go. There we go. In case you didn't see that, let me just hot restart it. So you reload. Take a bit longer than the fetching the data from the internet. But there we go. We have these images now. That is fantastic. Obviously, obviously there is a lot. And you know the beauty of what we've just done right here is you can adapt this the way you know you need to. You can change the URL. If you're not passing photos, you don't you generally don't really need this anymore. And you can customize this class as you need to, whatever information you are returning. You can if you don't want photos, it could be you know a list of something else, but this is essentially good to go where we create a Twitter style application, something like YouTube, something like Facebook. So at the end of the day, they all have feeds. They all have you know dynamic live com you know content, whether it's a common system or tiles. It's it's the same. It's essentially the same foundation, the same concept. If you have any questions though, feel free to pop me a message because I know we covered a lot, a whole heap of stuff. You know, do not hesitate, and I look forward to seeing you in the next awesome, great circular progress indicator video. I don't know where that came from, but I'll see you soon.